Pros for our April issue. This month we have something a little bit different. We have three nail artists with us. We have Katherine Wong, Gina Silvestro, and Viv Simmons. Welcome to all of you. Hi. 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 When I found out that all three of you were going to be in town, I decided that we definitely had to do a cover with all of you. And we did something that had never been done at Nail Pro before, which was have all three of you work on one set of nails. So we decided this was going to be a spring cover, and Gina came up with the idea of doing flowers and butterflies. How did this all come to be? When you said it was a spring cover, I just imagined butterflies. I don't, I don't remember ever seeing butterflies on a cover, and I just had this image of a butterfly on a finger, and I just thought we could do something really fun with butterflies and flowers and spring colors. I know there's a story behind here. So Gina was in Singapore doing a class mm -hmm. for us and um, we went to the hair salon mm -hmm. where she arrived a day earlier and I went through the magazine, saw this um, picture of some butterflies and flowers We said, okay, we're going to go along with the spring colors, the pinks, the pastels and everything. And um, we thought about it, you know, um, other than just doing something natural, maybe we would put some bling into it. So that came up with the concept of putting um, crystals onto the butterflies and so on. And um, also, because the three of us, we each specialize in different things, like Gina in gels, and we wanted to incorporate like um, um, gel extensions, mm -hmm. and then um, gel painting, and 3D. So that, that's how we came about, the three of us doing this tag team. Yeah, so each of you did what your specialty was. And it all began with Gina prepping the nails and sculpting the nails out of gel. So how did you begin? I extended the forms because we decided that we wanted to go with a more fantastical theme. So first I started with sculpting the nails in clear gel. My job was basically to extend the nails um, with color, a lot of different colors all mixed together and fading together. And we added some bling into it, some different different types of glitters, different color glitters in different spots. That way when we put the finished touches, it would shine through. Right. And I noticed that you used a lot of different layers, like basically you started with a clear gel and then you went in maybe with a little bit of a glitter gel. It seemed like a lot of layers. How did you keep the nails thin? Just working one layer at a time and every layer that I put, I would add a little bit more color, just very thin, and then I would cure a little bit and then add more color and more color. So then you went in and you filed them down. Uh, hand file or electric file? We used a little bit of both. We used the electric file to get the basic shape, just the rough shape, and then we went in and um, fine-tuned it with the hand file. Do you have any tips for filing nails that are this long? Hold the nail so that it's stable whenever you're filing it. Especially when it. you're dealing with the tip being so long, you have to really have a good grip on the nail mm -hmm. and the finger so that it doesn't wobble around too much. Is it safe to use an electric file if you're not very well practiced with it? Absolutely not. If you're not practiced with it. If you have proper training and experience with it, then it's 100% safe. Um, I, it all depends on the technician that's using it. Mm -hmm. And when we do use the electric file, we're very careful with it. We've all been certified and trained and we have a lot of experience with it. And we're also very careful not to damage the natural nail or get too close to the natural nail. Um, what we mainly used it for was on the extensions that weren't close to, the, close to the skin just to get the shape of the nail and then we went in around the cuticle area and near the nail bed with a hand file. So after you filed the nails, then it was Catherine's turn to add your special touch. What did you do? So what I did basically was using a special gel paint. It doesn't spread, so I put in details of the butterfly motifs. Um, because Gina did so much work with the base, um, I didn't want to cover that up. So what I did was I did outlines and uh, detailed fine lines in like different colors as it fades into a different color, trying not to cover all the base. Um, do all the details and then uh, finger to finger, and then finish that off, cure it in the light for about two to three minutes and then gel top it over before the next step where Viv's comes in and put in all the 3D flowers. Now before we get to Viv's 3D flowers, you hand painted um, half of a butterfly wing, but then you went in and you created a 3D butterfly wing. Yes. How did you do that? Um, the 3D butterfly, we could actually um, sculpt it on the nail as well, but I wanted to make it more vivid. So what I did um, was I did the butterfly on a fantasy form and um, first put in different colors, pressing it out, layer it, and then um, using a black to outline and then put on all the stones because like I said just now, we wanted something that's natural, but at the same time, 
it's bling. Yeah. So did all that and then take it out from the form and then put it onto the nail. What would you suggest for nail techs who haven't done this before, who mm -hmm. like the idea of the butterfly, they want to create a 3D butterfly like you did. Do you have any suggestions in terms of, of, of a pattern to follow or to just practice on their own, free form? How did you learn? For, for techs who are very new and they want to try this, what I would suggest is um, they can find a picture of a butterfly put a tape over it so that they can see through and then do a 3D acrylic following the details on the tape. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they can take it out and do it on the nail. They can practice that way. Um, but whatever I demoed earlier um, on the form, they can do exactly the same thing on the nail itself. The only reason why I did it on a form is because I want to have different texture at the end of the design. And then how did you attach the 3D butterfly wing to the nail? You can attach it by using a nail glue or you can use clear powder. Now if you want the wing to kind of stand up a little bit more, I would use clear powder because that would give it the support. But um, if you want it kind of flat on the nail, you can use a nail glue. So now it was Viv's turn to come in and add all of the 3D flower detail that you didn't do so well. While Gina started doing the extensions on the model, you were working on building 3D flowers. How did you do that? I was using a fantasy form, um, which is the equivalent of using a sculpture form. However, the fantasy forms, to describe what they are, it's like a tip or the equivalent of a tip, a very long tip. They come in all different sizes. And the great thing about them is once you apply the product onto the fantasy form, you can peel it off. Right. And it comes off very easily and you can reuse the fantasy form time and time again. Plus it gives you something to really hold on to. Yeah, because right? it's so long and wide. So I basically worked with the fantasy forms. I created parts of the petals and then I built them up to create the 3D flower, freestanding flower. Now, how do you create the petals and how do you get the base of the flower till you're building up towards the center? So I always work with the first petal that little bit bigger. I flatten it out. I wait um, only a few probably about a minute and then I actually use a tool to remove it gently off the fantasy form. Whilst the product is still pliable, then I mould it into shape with my fingers or um, a pair of tweezers or whatever. And I'll use either a bit of acrylic or a little bit of gel and I'll place it on each point and then I'll pop the petal down but facing um, or sort of standing upright and then I'll work my way around in a circle sort of format. And, and as I get toward or come closer in towards the centre, the petals get smaller and smaller. Now something I should have asked um, when Catherine was talking about the butterfly wing, similar to yours, what kind of consistency should the acrylic be when you're building? Because you obviously don't want it too thin and runny, otherwise you'll have acrylic all over your fantasy form. That's right, but if you work too dry, then you won't be able to form the bead. So you need to basically have the, you know, that perfect consistency and you'll know when you've got the consistency right, when you place the bead onto the form or fantasy form, whatever you're using or tip, if it forms a perfect little circle and there's not a ring or a rim of monomer sitting around the actual bead, then it's, it's the right consistency. Then you allow it to set for maybe 30 seconds. Um, press into the bead. If the bead doesn't bounce back out, it's ready to be moulded. If the bead bounces back out or it flattens out, it's too wet. Um, still, so you need to actually wait until the, the bead is at that you know, perfect consistency. Press the brush into the bead. If it, if it molds and it doesn't bounce back out, then you're ready to start forming whatever. Um, you know, you can use it for petals or for any, any type of 3D sort of art. On the big flower that you were creating, you had a slight gold tip around each petal. Did you do that after it was dried or was that part of what you were sculpting for each petal? No, I created the flower out of white acrylic and then I went back later once it was actually molded together. So once I put each petal um, on individually, then I went back with a very, very fine bead of a metallic gold acrylic and I just lined the edges of the petal with that metallic gold. But I used it quite dry so that it wouldn't run onto the petal. You also created leaves. What did you use to create the veins and the leaves? I used a tool. Um, it's a very thin metal tool that, that you can actually use to cut into the leaves. However, if you don't have one of those tools, you can actually use a sculpture form, fold it in half, and you'll get a very fine, um, fairly solid edge on the end of the sculpture form, which you can use that to cut in as well. Once the nails came to you, you added some 3D flowers directly onto the nail. Do you use the same technique as you would if you're creating a flower off of a nail? Yes, it is the same technique. The angle's different though, because you're working on a nail and the nail's got more, more of a natural curve in it. 
so the angle of the brush is a, is a little bit different. But what I did do was once I created the 3D flower, then I'd also created extra petals on the fantasy form. So we wanted to have like a layered type of effect, which was Catherine's idea. So I built up the flower onto the nail, and then I added in the extra petals that I created on the fantasy form afterwards and placed them on with a pair of tweezers and some glue. How did you attach the big flower that you created on the fantasy form to the nail? Just a bead of clear acrylic underneath so that it would hold it and secure it. Sometimes um, when the nail has been shined and used glue directly onto the nail, it can slip a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to basically um, attach on quite quickly. In addition to the leaves that you added, you also created this little swirly curly cube thing. How did you create that? And is it made out of acrylic as well? That was made out of acrylic and I used a straw. Um, to make the spiral, which you can also use um, a C-curve stick and, and apply the acrylic around. So you work fairly dry when, you, when you're creating like a spiral effect and with your brush keep cutting it in so that you get that nice thin even finish. And then once it's, once it's dry you can just slide it off the straw or the C-curve stick. Now I noticed you added a little extra bling onto that as well with some rhinestones. Uh, did you just use nail glue again there? Or? Yes, for those I just used some glue. Yeah. And then how did you attach that little spiral, delicate spiral, to the nail? <laughs> With a bit of difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> um, for that, again, I used a little bit of acrylic. When you apply a little bit of acrylic, it will start, once the bead starts to set that little bit, it gives more support than a little bit of glue because you need to have the glue in a precise spot. So it's almost like using a putty when you can press the item into like a semi-solid bead. Well, you know what, these nails turned out so beautifully. And not that I doubted it for a second because I've seen all of your work independently and it's fantastic. But to see it all come together with each of you using your own strength to build this one set of nails I think was remarkable and the nails were fantastic. So thank you so much for all coming in. And I know you're exhausted since you all flew in this morning um, from all over the world to do these nails for us. It, you couldn't tell at all that you guys were tired. The nails looked beautiful. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. They thank had a good time. <laughs>